Oh my God, guys. Guess what I have in my email? I don't know, Bridger. What do you um, have? Lasagna? This. It says, join your friends in Star Wars The Old Republic for a seven-day free trial. <laughs> yeah! 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 That's, what I've been waiting for. That's what I've been waiting for. Totally. <laughs> I don't know what else you would have got in your email. Shut up! <laughs> Yes, welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Tales of Tyria right here on the Sound Strategy Network. You can find us on YouTube or at talesoftyria.com. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, doing things out of order here today because that's the kind of day it is. Welcome, everyone. I am Bridger. Welcome to this, your Guild Wars 2 podcast. Tales of Tyria is the name, and our game is talking. <laughs> so with that, let me introduce everybody to you here today. I have to my bottom yet again, Vega. Welcome to the show, sir. Hello. Good evening. How are you doing? Good to see you. So, Kai, welcome to the show. Hello! And finally, we have Great here today. Welcome to the show, sir. Hello there. Now, you may have noticed that we are missing our, uh, indemnable, uh, why do words always fail me when I'm trying to describe freelancer? Uh, probably because I'm lying. <laughs> anyway, he's off today. Uh, <laughs> he's got, uh, he's got some training for his new job, which is, uh, hats off to him. He's got, uh, got a lot of stuff to look forward to here, and that means that maybe he'll have less time to practice, so I'll be able to beat him when we get in the game. All right, so... With that having been said, let's go through our uh, show today is going to be all kinds of great stuff. We've got some interesting links we've got going on in here. We've got uh, a round table and a Bridger rant. So with that having been said, guys, let's get into the program. The pre-purchase has finally been announced. I cannot believe it. Can you believe it? Uh, We're almost there. I'm so happy. Yeah. <sighs> all right, so... That having been said, we can't order the thing until April 10th. I know. Such a tease. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it which I don't know why. I, I don't know why they put it off to April 10th. I mean, all the information's up there. Just look, take, take my, my money. money. Order. For like 20 days. <laughs> oh, I didn't see this. They actually they put the prices into the digital and uh, the digital edition and the digital deluxe edition. I hadn't seen that earlier. That's something they oh, changed they on the page here. Yeah, oh. I think they released those prices to various news outlets, but it wasn't on the page, so a lot of people got really confused. Uh, but uh, this is pretty much it here, and this is a nice new surprise here. Everybody who pre-purchases the game gets access to uh, the all the beta events, presumably uh, the ones that start after uh, April 10th, when, when you possibly can pre-purchase it. Also, three days of Head Start access, and the Heroes Band, guys. This thing is way better than the One Ring, that stupid thing that you find in World of Warcraft. This one is the Two Ring. And that... <laughs> <laughs> but there is a, the second ring. The one ring. I know there's the, the two world. ring, but I like this ring. It's still better than the one ring, and you get it for free on all your characters. It'll be a nice little boost. Two power, two precision, two blood, et cetera, et cetera. Two healing, two critical damage. I mean, that's just kind of a nice little boost. Um, so that's what everybody gets. Then the digital deluxe edition for an extra $20, you're going to get a mini pet of Ritlock, which don't even get me started. I could go on a bridge ran about that by myself. Does anybody else think that's the stupidest idea in the world? I think they should get? have been a mini case because no! I'm fed up with Charles being everywhere. No, it shouldn't be a mini anything. It's, it's, I don't want a person. I don't want no. It, 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 it breaks all of the immersion. Ritlock's a hero. <laughs> Why are you making a tiny version of him? Like a tiny golem? Fine. A a t turtle? Okay, I like turtles. Whatever. Turtle. But you know, turtle. <laughs> turtles. I like turtles. 
So the other thing that people have been talking about is, is this digital deluxe thing worth it when three of the items that you get in there expire? I think the, the, the one yeah, that the I one saw. Yeah, the one-time use. Yeah, the ones that I saw on Reddit was called the temporary digital deluxe <laughs> edition or something <laughs> to that effect. Uh, so what do you guys think? Is this, is this really worth it? Is this kind of chickening out? Are they kind of skipping out on something? I mean, I, somebody pointed out that Guild Wars 1 had this really cool sparkly effect whenever you did an emote for the people that purchased these editions. Yeah. But in this, all you get is, uh, you know, the Mist Fire Wolf Elite skill, which you don't know anything about. I don't know. Vega, your thoughts. I, I, I like... I really like how if you just pre-order it, you get all the beta weekends, the three-day head start, and that little ring. Um, I think that alone, for just doing the pre-order, makes it so worth it. You know, just for the digital edition. The deluxe edition, it does seem sort of anticlimactic because there's a bunch of items that are the one-time use. Um, and then for the collector's edition, which I'm personally getting... <laughs> I know I know all the Europeans are extremely Ooh. upset because it's like three hundred dollars or something for the collector's yeah, edition. I pay like an extra I think it's an extra sixty dollars more than you because I'm in Europe. Which <laughs> is crazy. Um but I, that I, I don't understand, but I mean all the stuff you do get in the collector's edition, I think it's pretty damn cool. The digital deluxe edition, not so much. I feel that I, but it is a kind of a big jump between the digital and the collectors, so it's kind of it's kind of hard to say. I feel like yeah. they should have called it the digital enhanced edition. It just doesn't feel deluxe, right? Yeah, it's, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. Well, um, the difference between the two is like with the digital deluxe, you get all the in-game stuff, but you don't get any of like the the swag that would come with the game, like the physical swag. So you don't get mm -hmm. the nice figure, you don't get the art book and stuff. I mean, I said under yeah. hundred for me, so. Yeah, but I mean, I guess I guess it is only another twenty bucks. I mean, there is a monthly fee, so maybe you, if you look at it as <laughs> if this was an MMO with a monthly fee, that twenty bucks is like your first second month. Months, your second month of <laughs> yeah, you know. Mm. Well, I mean, these things sound interesting, and and I and I like the idea of the Gollum Banker and the Chalice of Glory. I don't mind those being things thrown into the digital deluxe edition. I just wish there was like one more permanent thing that you got on there, like maybe one character slot more than normal. I think that would be a nice thing to put in there, and maybe the the collector's edition could have two extra character slots or something. I, that's really something that yeah. I was really hoping that at least would be in the co collector's edition is to get an additional character slot because I'm gonna want that. I know that. So you and, know what? Go, oh, go ahead. Kai, go ahead. <laughs> One thing that I thought was good that I thought you know made me want to get the digital deluxe because I won't be getting the collector's edition now, but because I already have like like Team Legacy, I've already got a good big guild. If everyone buys at least the digital deluxe, when we first make our guild and everyone deposits their influence points, I think that'd be quite a big boost, and we'll hopefully be able to buy something interesting straight away. And also with like PvP, like straight away is really good for a guild that's already developed so the guilds that have already like pre-launch and the ones that are moving from guild wars one to guild wars two it will be beneficial for the whole guild to at least buy the digital deluxe to get those influence points boosts especially with the three-day head start as well i think that is a benefit at least so that kind of actually brings up a question now what we see here is it says for tome of influence give you a give your guild a one-time boost of influence and then it, for Chalice of Glory, it says get some extra glory with this one-time use chalice. Now, I believe some people are saying that these are probably like the equivalent of 10% boost for 24 hours or something to that effect, rather than here's a dump of 100 influence or what have mm -hmm. you. So that we, we're not entirely sure how these work, at least as far as I know. Uh, but is it possible that these items will be on every character that you make, assuming that they is. work like that? I'd hope so. Yeah, I assume they would be, because I know in Guild Wars 1 right now, I have, like, a bonus thing on all my characters. I type slash bonus, and they get all these, like, random weapons and things whenever <laughs> I make a new character. That's a bonus. It, I like it's it. slash bonus. I think, I think almost what they're trying to do is, with the digital deluxe, they're almost trying to tease you. Sort of like, look how convenient this Golem Banker is, and look at this Chalice of Glory and the Tomb of Influence, and then those things are going to be sort of like microtransaction items you can buy at a later yeah. time. Yeah. And so they're sort of giving you a tease about, you know, look how look how good this is and trying to get you to sort of buy into it. And then later on, 
oh, well, I'm not paying a monthly fee, but I'll pay $3 to have that extra influence for 24 hours. That's a good point, actually. Like, that would make sense for them to kind of be advertising the things because, as she said, people can just buy the game and the people who support the game are going to want to buy the deluxe edition or the collector's edition. And, you know, if those things that they find at the beginning of the game, like, oh, my God, this golden bank is really useful, it's really amazing, and then they see that it's in the, you know, in-game store, <laughs> they can be like, okay, I'm going to buy this for, like, whatever amount it is. I'm sure it won't be much, but that's a good yeah. point, actually. I would do that. I would advertise it. I because thought I, of that. <laughs> Whenever when I play a game like League of Legends, that's free to play, but you mm -hmm. know you could buy the heroes or you know spend some money on it. I'm always the type of guy that's like, oh well, I didn't pay thirty bucks for this game, so let me spend five dollars here and let me spend five dollars there, and then and the next thing you I know, know you it, spent a hundred dollars, and you're exactly. like, what happened? Do I have <laughs> no, two I, copies of this what, game? What, no, I haven't even purchased the entire game yet. How does that yeah. happen? And crazy. so I think I think what will happen with Guild Wars is like. Oh, well, I'm not paying a monthly fee, so, you know, I guess I could spend, you know, $5 here and $5 there sort of thing. Yeah, Which I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I, I, I think it's a good thing. So, some comments from the chat room. Gage Cornelius, in what I can only assume must be a German accent, in all caps, says, It is worthwhile and we should support the developers! Uh, so, that's his opinion. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, I am probably going to be getting the collector's edition. If only so that each of us can have, like, we could just have, like, four Ritlocks in this screen here. Just, like, we just have an entire show with just Ritlocks all over the place. <laughs> I want it, but show. I think... What my guild is going to do, um, well, they're going to, like, adopt a European and, like, well, this is what we're doing. And they're going to buy their collector's edition for them, and then we'll just give them the money and they'll ship it to us. So we don't have to pay the extra $60. <laughs> uh, there you go. That's not bad. <laughs> so that's, that's if anyone wants to adopt me, is that European? <laughs> as long as you don't mind lying about your VAT tax import. I mean, uh, you know, just, just get it past customs. Anyway. <laughs> Put it up your bum. Yeah. <laughs> So, Moving on. Asking, mm. How many CEs will Freelancer be getting? <laughs> yeah, I think eight, he's probably going to buy two. Eight. He always buys two and leaves one in the shrink wrap. It's an investment, really. I'm going to sell it on eBay four years later. So the other information that we've had from this pre-purchase, by the way, some people may still not understand, pre-purchase is different from pre-order. Pre-order does not get you access to the three days beforehand and the beta event access. Only a pre-purchase does. And the difference is a pre-purchase is where you pay all the money up front. It's going to NCSoft uh, and ArenaNet, and then you'll get into the beta events, etc. Pre-orders are what you can do, go into a GameStop or, a, or go to Amazon or what have you and pre-order it. You put like $5 on deposit or what have you, and then you only get one day head start, not a three day head start. So they're trying to encourage you to buy directly from Amazon and NCSoft, which, you know, makes sense from them. Cut out the middleman, kill the GameStop. <clears throat> anyway, kill um, the games. <laughs> other things that we've learned you is... You must die. Indeed. With a... Beta weekend event per month of these uh, sort of public beta weekend events. NDA is going to be lifted for these Whee! particular events, which is going to be great. Um, we still have no release date, and I put this in my show notes. It's okay with a link to what is this? Oh, oh, that's right. Diablo yes, 3 me. also this week. I forgot Ooh, I put this in oh, here. Blasphemy. <laughs> my oh, bad. Um, meh. Am I the only one that's like. I'm like a little schoolgirl over Diablo 3. I was, and then oh, I thought no about it, and I'm like, it. $60. And then I thought about all the things that I expected to be in there that aren't going to be in there, and I'm like, mm, no, I'll wait. I'll wait. I don't know. I'll I already, already pre-ordered the collector's what, edition. <laughs> I'm going to wait to hear what people say, because Blizzard is not the same as it used to be. We talked about this last week. It's not the same Blizzard North doing Diablo 3, so we'll see how it turns out. I'm going to wait to hear what people say. I'm sure that Vega's gotten it, going to get it, Freelancer's going to get it. If everybody's like, oh my god, this game's awesome, and Guild Wars 2 still isn't even out, then maybe I'll go for it. Anyway, yeah. more news. Guys, no Guild Wars 2 at PAX East. No! <laughs> Now I don't feel so bad not going. And I don't feel <laughs> yeah, so right? bad being English. I feel well, bad. Yeah, I feel bad. We're gonna, we're totally gonna go and have a great time. But there's not gonna be any Guild Wars 2 booth. It's not playable. There's no arena net. There's like two arena net developers there for two panels unrelated to Guild Wars. Um, uh -huh. So that happened. 
anyway, moving on to the next bit of news here. Possible trait combinations chart made by fan. Found this on Reddit and Guild Wars Insider. Here is the chart. Let me pull this up in full screen mode if I can. Actually, this is full screen, so let's zoom in a little bit here. Um, what we have here is somebody that went through all of the possible combinations of traits within five lines. And this uh, is basically trying to spread them out numerically in different ways. 30, 30, 10, 30, 35, 5, 30, 25, 15, 30, 25, 10, 5, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So in yellow here are the ones that give you the highest number of major traits. Uh, so seven major traits and seven minor traits are all the yellow distributions, and there's six of those. So you could think of those as probably the most effective uh, combinations because theoretically major traits are better than minor traits, and there's six of those. And that doesn't even count all the possible combinations of 30, 30, 10, 0, 0, or 30, 0, 30, 10, 0, or 30, 0, 0, 30, 10, et cetera, et cetera. So six combinations just in terms of how you lay out the points within individual columns, not less how you do that within an individual set of traits. So that's very interesting. Now, <clears throat> the next one down the list, the, the green here, is with two of the odd-numbered trait systems, which gives you six majors and eight minors. So you sort of trade one major for one minor, but maybe there's some situations where this might be viable. 17 combinations! This is an absurd number of possible possibilities here that we could probably contest could be viable with our knowledge that we know now. At the very least, we're gonna have six that you're swapping all over the place. I'm very impressed. This is way too min-max for not knowing enough about the game. I'm sorry, this is way too far. I, I think it's... I, I, like, to do that. I like being able to see like how many different combinations are going to be, though. It's not really min-maxing, though, because it's all just kind of theoretical at this point. I think it's nice just to see, like, so this is how many different things you could possibly do. Right. And the blue... And that's pretty interesting. I don't think the blue are ever going to be really viable. It's five majors and nine minors. Nah. Nah. That's more like a jack-of-all-trades kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, those might be leveling style uh, builds so that you don't know, are you doing a dungeon now or are you going on uh, you know, a dynamic event? Maybe you're jumping into world versus world. While you're leveling, maybe you'll have one of those jack-of-all-trades builds, but I don't think you're going to use it when you have a specific task in mind. I wish we could have, like more than one build i mean i'm hoping i know that they did say that you'll have like a pvp saved one and then your pve one but i want to be able to have like a main spec and an off spec like you do in other mmos just so i can switch between being a support and being offensive rather than you know having to change my traits all the time Yep, so I thought that was a really cool chart. There's a link in the show notes for those looking for it. You can find it on the details of the uh, video if you're watching it on YouTube or on the Tales of Tyria website, talesofteria.com, if you're listening to it. Uh, let's see. Moving on next down the line here, uh, we've got a very interesting uh, post on Reddit, which is actually a brilliant idea. I wish I had thought about it, um, called What You Might Not Know About Guild Wars 2. Basically challenging everybody on the subreddit to post some obscure piece of knowledge that most people wouldn't know. And there was actually a few things that I didn't know. And the top one on the list, apparently a lot of people didn't know. Uh, how many of you guys knew that you could set up your own music playlist within the game? What? I didn't know that. <laughs> you can set up your own music playlist, and you can basically you know, choose the files on your computer, and it will take steps to lower and pause your playlist during cutscenes. And I believe you can also choose music to be battle music versus non-battle music so it'll change to your like upbeat awesome mortal combat <laughs> that's amazing that's pretty good that's really cool i can't i can't wait to do something with that <laughs> i had not known about that um let me see what else did i mark down here are things that i didn't know about oh <laughs> so, this is a very interesting conversation. So what somebody posted the whole thing about the pigeon, right? Delivering you mail. Mm -hmm. And somebody said, uh, so if you're underwater, does the pigeon drown? <laughs> and then somebody said, I Scuba want, pigeon. I want a refund for this pigeon. <laughs> I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's like oh yeah i'm doing this underwater mini dungeon just send me that sword no wait too late oh dear <laughs> i snuffed out snuffed out a life as surely as this i don't know 
where I'm going with that. Moving on. Uh, what else do we got here? Uh, we have the minimum system requirements having finally been revealed along with this, uh, this pre-purchase announcement. And they look pretty damn good. What do you guys think? Are your computers able to run? No. <laughs> no? Um, you said no. <laughs> me, no, literally, like, I think I looked on, like, rankings, and the minimum graphics card for the Old Wars is, like, ranked 170, and mine's, like, 189. So it's quite bad, but what I What do you knew have? <laughs> it's, like, just a little is mouse. Is there a crank in a on it? Do you wheel. have to turn yeah. it while you're playing? <laughs> you have to hug it, no, like, two pedals. hug it to make it do stuff. You got two pedals but, underneath. You can exercise. Yeah, I know what I'm upgrading. I'm going to spend about $600 upgrading my computer, so it's, like, high-end, like, top, so... Yeah, I knew that anyway. All right, so everybody, freelancer, is in the chat trolling <laughs> us. Not even on here. If he was on here, <clears throat> let me do my... <clears throat> Those requirements are a joke, guys. It's really... You're going to have to have a much better computer than that because, yeah, maybe you could run that if you're just looking at a tree, but if you're in world versus world, it's just not going to happen. There we go. I channeled my freelancer. <laughs> Whew. Whew. There we go. All right, so... Yeah, I think, uh, and I agree with him there. I mean, these requirements are going to be the minimum to have, like, you know, 25, 30 FPS in the lightest areas in the game. Uh, better to have at least a quad-core processor and at least, like, a 200 series card uh, would be my guess. I just actually upgraded from a tri-core 200 series to a quad-core 560 Ti with 448 cores. Yeah. That's what I'm getting. Really, 560 Ti. Why do they have to have that much in the name? It's ridiculous. All right. And so... then it makes it sound dramatic, like Corsair Vengeance RAM. Like it just makes you want to buy it. Indeed. Super HD Remix. <laughs> Super HD Remix, <laughs> yes. Guild Wars 2, the Super HD Remix. So I think the biggest um, issue with these requirements that a lot of people have pointed out is that. Uh, it requires a keyboard and mouse and an internet connection. I mean, honestly, I Arena Net, I'm not made of money here. They're so, just too demanding at this point. Too demanding. Keyboard what? and I mouse? Just, I know, why can't I just oh. relay with the arrow keys to turn my character? And mouse? <laughs> what am I going to do with a mouse? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess we'll have to figure it out. <clears throat> so, the other thing, did you guys see the interview with John Peters that happened this week? Yes. I watched some of it. Not a bit. Did you hear there was an awesome shout out to Team Legacy? What? In so far as they answered one of the questions that at Team Legacy Net asked <laughs> on, uh, oh, on yeah, Twitter. Oh, yeah, I saw um, who went to the Team Legacy Twitter. He was like, thank you for like answering my question. I was like, you, you suck up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one way to, you know, congratulate your arch nemesis guild on their uh, question well done, I suppose. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I didn't see anything particularly uh, notable in the discussion. I mean, it was a very interesting topic, a lot of stuff that we had heard before. I like hearing his stories about, you know, the classes that he plays and, and how he does different things. Um, no new major information that I heard, or, or, or at least not that I wrote down here. Although we did get a chance to see Ritlock in comparison to an iPhone. And it's, it's possible that either that iPhone is, is smaller than normal size or Ritlock is a monster. <laughs> I think one of those two probably a monster things. going with probably the monster. A monster. So, I'm happy with my Ritlock plushie. Uh, they did confirm no duels at launch. Yeah, I think that was in there, and I think that's something that we had heard confirmed before. They reconfirmed it, which is very disappointing. Uh, I would love to see you know the ability to like when, especially like when I'm just on Teamspeak arguing with Malkior, like no, there is no way that build is viable. Let's come on, let's do this. Come on, let's do this. Like, I just want to go and show them how it is. And I don't care how it turns out. Like, that needs to happen. Otherwise, we're just going to keep talking. And anybody in Team Legacy knows that when Malkier and I disagree, there's no end. We well, need some way to resolve that. Right? John Peters, he didn't say, like, oh, yeah, there's, he said there's, like, no dueling at launch. But he also kind of explained to people, like, how you could duel in the current game, like, how they do duel. Apparently, they go set up, like, a match in, like, uh, PvP or something. <laughs> and they just go in there and they fight, like, 1v1. So, like, that's do dueling. That. Yeah, it's just disappointing that it's not really, uh, you know, very easy to, uh, to, to jump into. And just if you see somebody there and be like, hey, that's a really cool build. Care to try it out? So <laughs> hopefully they let us do it in, like, the PvP uh, mists or something eventually, maybe a patch down the way. All right. 
So, that brings us to the ArenaNet blog, Building Community. For some reason, I did not put a link to this, so I'm going to have to open it up myself uh, and, and link directly to... There we go. Put it in the show notes while we're talking like a pro and not stopping the conversation. So, official forums, ladies and gentlemen. Official Yay. forums. I'm excited Good thing about or bad that. thing? Kai, why is it a good thing? Because... Some people, not naming anyone, doesn't like Guild Wars too gory. And it'd be nice to have a forum that's moderated by people who actually know what they're talking about. Okay. <laughs> As opposed to people who have an agenda and a grudge? Yeah, a secret agenda to hunt me down and kill me. That's what the Guild Wars too gory moderators want to do. So it's just nice to have a forum that's got a set rules, that's run by the company who make the game. And, you know, it's not just like people who have had a community for such a long time. There's people who didn't play Guild Wars 1, so, you know, come into these forums as new posters and aren't really respected and trolled and things like that. So it's just cool to have, like, a fresh start for everyone in a forum that's, like, professionally run. All I right. Think. What do you guys think? Great. Uh, it's good. They can centralize all the whiners together. <laughs> <laughs> that way they can keep the form, you know, the fan sites for, like, this actual discussion. Because there's going to be no discussion on, like, main forms, ever. Mm -hmm. I have yet to see a game's main forms have, like, legitimate discussion, ever. Freelancers <laughs> suggest that they have to make sure there are server-specific forums. I have to imagine there's going to be server-specific. Now, here's an interesting question. Would they be able to make those server-specific forums private so that only if you have an account that's bound to that particular server could you actually get into and post on that server? The question is, how secure would that be? Well, it would be as secure as if somebody wanted to pay to transfer over to your server for a little while, then they'd be able to get in and, and view that, uh, that forum. Though, theoretically, they would probably want to impose the same limitations, like, you know how you can't go into world versus world when uh, right after you've done a server transfer? I would think that they would also not to be able to view the specific forums of the server you just transferred to until like two or three or four weeks or something after your transfer happened. Um, Vega, what do you think? Public or private on those server forums? Um, I like private. It stops trolls from just kind of going in there and <laughs> causing up a ruckus. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I also like the idea that if you do transfer servers that you got to have that grace period where you can't just immediately start posting on the forums or jumping in the world versus world and stuff. Um, in terms of the community side, I, I like what they're doing because, to me, this is sort of a step in a direction of having, I guess, more organized. How they've said that they want to conduct their own tournaments and stuff like that. If they're starting with the, having their own official forums, um, maybe they'll eventually transition that into having their own streams and stuff for tournaments or something like that. Just sort of throwing out ideas. Um, um, I like it. I think it's a good thing that they're doing. So the immediate reaction to a lot of people was, uh, oh, good, official forums. That's a place I can stay away from. <laughs> because, <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Well, you know, oh, there's I'm the Steam forums, place. there's the WoW forums, and I, I have heard horror stories, so I'm going to assume the SWOTOR forums. <laughs> Basically, every <laughs> massive community that's had a forum has just just had nothing but but repulsive, slimy, disgusting worthlessness coming out of it for a long time. Um, again, with the words, I'm not sure why when I'm describing freelance. I mean, um, it, server it, it, It's not even like that. <laughs> it's just tears. It's like always just tears and people just crying. That's what it always is. It's either the game isn't good, it's either this is broken, or everyone's mad at somebody that's actually enjoying the game. Like, that's literally all official forms yeah. are. I see that, but I also think the way the community team at ArenaNet run things is quite, they know what they want, they know what they need to do, and they won't take, like, any crap, basically. And I think if people are just whining, I don't think they'll hesitate to, like, ban them from forums or delete posts or things like that. So I think they'll be a lot stricter and... The reason they want it to be a nice, good community, I think that they will, like, take precautions and things like that in regards to, like, trolling. And, you know, you could actually get banned in-game if you're, like, caught trolling on forums or whatever. But I don't know. But I just I do think they'll take, like, a stronger stand than a lot of other game forums that are kind of, like, neglected or people are just hired to be forum moderators rather than actually the community team. I, I, I think also that having their own official forums 
it makes it, I guess, I don't know if it makes it easier for them, but it, it lets them look at one area for people that are complaining or things that need to be changed. Or when they're looking for ideas for when they got to patch things or if something really is overpowered or something's broken, as opposed to if, you know, the developer is trying to listen to a bunch of different fan sites that are coming up with all these different ideas, they have a more centralized area to find it. That being said, it's probably going to take just as long for them to sift to s filter through all the trolls and all the people that are just QQing for no reason, as opposed to going to the more quality sites. But um... so you mentioned the idea of them banning people or, or temporary banning them from the forums, and if they do it in any way that comes close to how they banned people in Guild Wars, on um, in the actual game, I don't know how many people have seen this, but. When botters got banned in that game, a giant death wielding a scythe would come up and kill their character. And then they would just be banned. So that everybody around them gets to point and laugh. And ha 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 ha. Look what happened to you. So, that's so funny. That's what I want to see. I want to like go into a thread and see like this vitriolic post of, Well, you don't know what you're talking about because I hate you. And then... Just as I scroll down, this <laughs> shark just come and eat the post. And then it just says banned. And then from then on, I don't see anything from that user. Like, that needs see, to happen. See, that's what I mean. Like, I like to see a giant hammer. Yeah, a giant like a hammer. band hammer. Yeah, they have a sense of humor. And even though they know what they want, they have humor about it. Like, the developers actually made something in Guild Wars 1 that showed when people were banned. That's funny. So they make it, like, lighthearted, but kind of, like, they don't take crap. They Like, people will openly know if people get banned. And I think that's a good thing. Like, it has to be put out there that if you act like an idiot or a troll, that you're going to get banned and you'll lose the game that you love. Death is serious business, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. I think that's the... I, I'd love it just to say game over and their character just get wiped. <laughs> that would be good. So what like makes... It, Sorry, go ahead. In, like, World of Warcraft, for example, the whole reason, like, you respawn is because it's not your time yet. Like, your hero, it's not his time to die. So Wait, I think there was an actual... There was, like, a narrative reason? Like, I thought we just... That's how ghosts worked. You just walk back to your body and you got to come back to life. <laughs> <laughs> that's how real life works, obviously. <laughs> so... What does make a really good community? I think the reason that these, you know, major forum uh, communities for the, the official forum communities for all of these MMOs is really just has to do with size. Um, is is it tends to be that at least this is this is my hypothesis. The people that have the time to spend on there to post a lot also tend to be the people that don't have a lot of to say of any significant nature. Let's put it that way. But this is a generalization, by the way. So what happens is if you have a small forum community, there's like one guy who posts all the time. And since there's not much going on, he doesn't have a lot to have a massive community. There's tons of people posting all the time. So these guys who have all the time in the world to stand on the forums and tell other people why they're wrong, like me, <clears throat> um, <laughs> they have... A hundred posts, and they just respond to all of them, and that makes the posts go back and forth really, really fast, and it's very difficult to follow and keep track of, and uh, it also makes it much harder to moderate, because you can only moderate if you can actually read and digest every post. So you can't curb, you know, issues until they're really out of control. And that's what makes these large forums so unwieldy is because they're large. Not because the actual community is bad, but because when you get a critical mass of these people who don't really add anything to the community, it's damn near impossible to really control them after a fashion. And you don't have any good justifications with which to ban them. So maybe if we just have really heavy-handed mods, that'll do it. I don't know. How do you control a forum that big? Sections. Maybe they'll employ like an army of moderators or something. Somebody actually had a really good idea that I read. Take away the general discussion. That doesn't yes. need to be there. Just actually have actual sections for each of the things. Structured PvP. World versus world. Class ones, server ones, and then PvE type content and things like that. And maybe a suggestions and ideas thread. Like, or, or forum. The general discussions forum is often the worst one. And it's because everybody goes there to post everything when you should post it in the appropriate section for a forum that big. So, I don't know. And Ooh, enter the upvote slash downvote. Oku. Uh, yeah, I was, I, just, think I was just reading that too. He That's must a good have idea. read, uh, what was that? Um, 
Damon and Freedom TM. Anybody in the chat room read those? It, it views a future where everything is done with upvote downvotes. Like uh, I that's like a that very idea. interesting. Like if it's downvoted so many times, like no one will see it. It's a, it's a good idea, and Reddit use it, and it means that posts that should be seen by everyone are upvoted, and people actually get to see them in like the new feed and things like that. It does have a problem though of of potentially people using the downvote to just downvote people that they disagree with rather than mm -hmm. people that deserve not to be seen, for example. However, even on Reddit, depending upon the subreddit that you go to, it tends to you know, even itself out. And the only time I find posts that are actually hidden is when the post actually doesn't really add anything, or it's just some guy calling somebody else a name or using a logical fallacy of some variety. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's got its own problems as a system. It can be abused, and Reddit and other forums it's... like that have struggled with it. I think it's even. I think it's it's harder to abuse though, because yeah, if I don't like something and I downvote it, that doesn't mean you're not gonna like it. It just means that oh, that guy pissed me off. I'm gonna downvote him. Man, 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 look at me. But but it's open to the it. tyranny of the majority is the real problem. If there's you know a bunch of yes men who think everything that Arena Net does is amazing and it can't possibly go wrong, and you post a criticism, and their their army gets there and downvotes you to obliv oblivion every time you criticize anything about the game, then we don't really have a lot of discussion, do we? Yeah, but at the same but at the same time, if uh, if you if there is no upvote downvote system, you make a good post, and then someone else just keeps on posting and posting and pushes your thing all the way down to the bottom anyway. You know, it's sort of the similar sort of system yeah, there. Yeah, that's true. If you have if you have the upvote downvote, it's better than having nothing. Because at least if it if if half the time it works and half the time it doesn't, it's still better than post just getting lost because there is no system. Moderators that moderate is always better. I think it's better than upvote and downvote, in my opinion. Now a very interesting system. Yeah, but but sorry, go but ahead. having but even having moderators, you'd have to have so many moderators to really moderate a big forum. So the upvote downvote just that's helps what the community the managers are there for. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, um, an interesting concept that was done on, I don't know if anybody else goes to BoardGameGeek.com, uh, is, let me see if I can find a decent example here. This has a bunch of um, things in it. So, they have a forum system where you can only give thumbs up. There is no such thing as a downvote button, but there is a report button, a hide slash report button. And what that does is, at the very least, it basically is an upvote downvote system. But to the user, just looking at the interface, it looks like all you've got is an upvote button. It doesn't look like there's a downvote. That X being a report button is essentially telling you, hey, only click this button if there's something that they're doing that's breaking the rules of the forum. You don't click this button just to disagree. Whereas an upvote downvote button is really like, okay, do you like it or not like it, right? That's more like a Facebook like button than it is, or, you know, a YouTube thumbs up, thumbs down button. But if there's only thumbs up and report this for breaking rules, now that, I think, is a really happy medium. I, I disagree. Really? Okay, go ahead. I, I, think, I think that works on smaller forums where people are normal decent human beings if you if you did something like that on a bigger forum people will treat the report button as the downvote and just report everything they don't like well the and thing there is point, if you're reporting at, too much at, i think the mods are going to say hey what are you doing these posts don't violate anything and they can ban you for reporting too much because report buttons are only supposed to be used for reporting posts that are violating uh yeah if if that that's what, what i was going to say is that if if the mod it does help the moderators do their job in that yeah, if someone's reporting too much, it lets you know who's trolling. But at the same time, I don't know. I, if, if everyone's doing it so much, are the moderators really going to be able to moderate all the people that are trolling and just reporting everything? All right. <clears throat> well, we'll just have to see which system that they pick, uh, and uh, we can move on here. We've got a couple more things to cover, and we're, whoa, way deep into uh, territory here. So <clears throat> before we move on... I have been reading a lot of the same stuff that I've been reading for a long time, and uh, it's making me a little bit upset. And when I get upset, I gotta vent. And when I vent, it's called a Bridger Rant. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, I've been looking at these forums, I've been looking at the Reddit, I've been looking at all the things on the internet, 
And I keep seeing people going, well, if there's no raids, what do I do when I get to level 80? <laughs> Stop playing the game! It's that simple. If you don't like PvP and you've completed all of the content that's interesting to you, just stop playing the game! Why does it have to keep going? Why does it have to keep going? It doesn't make any sense. They can't possibly make content fast enough for you to play. It just doesn't work, all right? You can't make content that they, it takes 10 hours to play. It takes three weeks to make at the very minimum if you reuse art assets, right? You can't just make infinite content. The only thing they can do is force you to replay the same content over and over again, and then we're right back to World of Warcraft, and that's not what we want. So, here's the answer. If you get to level 80, if you finish the personal stories, if you don't want to go and roll an alt and see another personal story for a different race, if you don't want to go back and check out all those other dynamic events that you haven't played through, if you don't want to sit there and or and replay through all of the crazy, amazing, awesome dynamic events, if you don't want to wait for a few weeks until they release another cool dynamic event thing that they have been planned to throw out there anyway, if you don't want to try and beat every single dungeon, or if you've already beaten every single dungeon in story mode and all of the explorable modes, if you've done all of that and you still don't want to do World vs. World, you don't want to do PvP, well then, turn the damn game off and buy another one! Diablo 3 is waiting for you! It's right there on your desktop! You don't need to keep playing the game indefinitely! Just wait! Six, eight months down the line, they'll have an expansion pack with a ton of new PvE content. You don't want them to have infinite content, because if you do, what you're asking for is watered down content, alright? What do you do when you hit that level 80 and you finished everything? Stop playing the game! You never hear somebody say, what do I do in Skyrim after I reach level 80? Like, no, you don't hear that. What do I do in Grand Theft Auto after I finish the story? Hmm, they are me more. I should have more to do. Why don't I have any raids in my Grand Theft Auto? I don't know. Why do you want raids in your Grand Theft Auto? <sighs> All right. <clears throat> I have a point. I feel better. Okay. That'd be an inter interesting rating in, Go <laughs> in Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm like on... I'm very much like a PvE hero. Like I like World v World, the idea of it, things like that, but I'm not really like a hardcore PvP. I never have been. I've always been a raider. Now, the reason why I would say, oh, I hope they have raids in Guild Wars 3 is purely because I like doing things with more than five people, but then I think, oh, world bosses and the big dragons and Zaitan and things like that. So those things for me are going to become what raiding has been in other MMOs where I go with a big bunch of people in my squad or whatever and I take down these world bosses and it's organized because we need to know tactics and things like that. So I don't think it needs to be a dungeon where we're progressing through like, you know, 10 bosses and we slowly throughout a period of three months get one boss down, another boss down or whatever because these world bosses will be different and there'll be other ones spawning. I mean, they've said that there's going to be ones that take over cities like Divinity's Reach. So, you know... I think I'm like in the middle. Like I don't think there needs to be raids, but I like the idea of doing something in a big group. But then, should be good. <laughs> I hope so. <clears throat> no, no. Keyword is not progression. Make it not the keyword. Make it not a word. I don't. <sighs> that's that's something that's uh, like there's people I've been talking to, and they're like, well, what do I do when I hit the max level? I'm like, I don't know. Whatever you want. I mean, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be doing World of its World in PvP. I don't know what you're gonna be doing. Right. And they're like, well, I, I don't like the PvP. There's no raids, and I'm like, just don't play the game. It sounds like you're not you don't like any parts of the game. You and you're gonna I, rush to lay it to level 80, so don't play it. I, I think what people need to realize is that they're not paying a monthly fee. You know, you're 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 paying your 60 bucks for your game. You're getting your game. You don't, like like Bridger said, you don't see people complaining after they beat Skyrim. Well, how come there's not more Skyrim? It only gave me 100 hours of entertainment. Yeah, That's clearly not <laughs> enough for my $60. I, pay, hey. I paid $60 for Call of Duty, and it only had a an eight-hour campaign. But, you know, clearly yeah, you, my, my people, MMO should be infinite. People need to realize that yeah, it's an MMO, but it's not like other MMOs. In, in other MMOs, when you're paying that subscription fee, you're paying for more content. You're, you're paying to kind of get that. And the company needs to support that, otherwise it's going to lose people. Um, but at the same time, the reason why they're <laughs> making the content is to keep you hooked in and to keep paying money to them. So the fact that there is no subscription fee doesn't mean that once you get to 80, I need more content. It's just go do other things. Mm -hmm. Don't level up all your professions, well, crafting, and make alts and things like that. And 
you know, as a good point you said, Vegas, that they want you to keep playing as well. So they're going to want to keep people and keep them interested to a certain degree so that when they do bring an expansion out, people buy it. So it's not yeah. that they're going to not have any content for you to do when you're ever 80, but, you know, there might not be anything now. But, you know, most MMOs, it takes you two months or three months or whatever to get to, you know, your first level 80 because you re-roll and things like that. So it's going to take you a while. By the time you get there, there could be another patch with new content already. So... We shouldn't worry yet. <laughs> and, I th and I think another thing is, is with the whole dynamic events and meta events, that's going to be changing so many areas so often that even just going back to other areas that you've gone to before, there's going to be new things to do there, new things to see. That's why someone in the, it all so, someone be in the really chat, someone in the chat was mentioning if we could talk about meta events. And for anyone who doesn't know, a meta event is just a very big dynamic event that has dynamic events following up. So it's a whole series so of change. dynamic events that yeah. change a much bigger area a dynamic event will change a town a meta event will change a region and doing that that in itself that gives replayability right there yeah i i don't i don't really think that what i'll be doing is taking my level 80 back down but i'll probably be, be playing at least one character through two or three or maybe even four or five of the different racial uh stories just so that i can see all of them i think that would be really slots. cool that's a lot of slots yeah um <laughs> We're, we're, we're hoping that they give us five so you can at least take up one character in each race and go through the mm -hmm. whole personal story thing. But hey, you know, depending upon how good that is, maybe I'll want to take a second one through to see where the branches change if I do something else. Yeah, I don't because know there's how so many it's questions. Be yeah, we just don't know. I, I'm going to need like 20 slots, or I'm just going to have to find people and just camp out in the starting zone and be like, what choices did you make? You better have made this choice so I can follow your personal story around and just like hop along their storyline. But. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need a lot. I hope you can buy infinite, like just keep giving them money for more character slots because I know I would. <laughs> Take it. Just keep throwing money at them. <laughs> at the screen. A hundred character slots. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's do the round table here. We've only got a few minutes left, but I'd like to talk about this for at least a little bit. Um, where the tires meet the road. Uh, this is a very interesting concept, and, and if anybody has not heard of this before, it's the concept of how well the mechanics of a game really touch on and, and meld with the concept or the theme of the game. And one thing that I always bring up as like a perfect mesh of the theme and the mechanics is things like Guitar Hero, things like Rock Band, where the actual mechanics are making you feel the way the theme is supposed to make you feel like. It's supposed to make you like feel like a rock star, right? And, and moving your fingers on a guitar, be it plastic, is still not quite as much <laughs> as an actual guitar, but it's a hell of a lot more than doing the same thing on a controller. Right? You still feel a lot more like a rock star with that plastic guitar than you do with a controller and with that That's actual microphone. You. Yeah, it's about that immersion factor, right? So, yeah. you know, compare that to, I don't know, how much does the controller and the timing of jumps and making you jump up into things or down on top of things make you feel like a plumber or, you know, a hero <laughs> trying to save a princess, <laughs> right? So. You know, in Zelda, like uh, the Ocarina of Time, one of the big amazing things there was the ability to move and dodge and try to fight things in three dimensions, which made you feel more like the hero of time. It made you feel more like this, you know, amazing hero that had these sword skills and being able to block and all this stuff more than more so than the top down view did. Um, at least in my view. So let's talk about Guild Wars 2 with relates to that. So what do you guys think? Vega, how do the combat systems in Guild Wars 2 sort of relate the mechanics and the theme of this visceral combat system as compared to other games, I guess? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to say without having played it and just kind well, of going on videos system. and stuff. We know that you can get yeah. behind objects to dodge arrows and things like that. So... We know yeah, the guess, differences in the combat systems. Yeah. Um, I guess just kind of going on, I, I think that so far they seem to be doing a pretty good job. I mean, in all the videos of just seeing the different classes using their skills, um, it, the skills feel like, you know, they belong to that character. They don't just feel like, you know, a different skill with a different name on a different character. You know how in, like, maybe in League of Legends or something, there's a many there's many different skills that they're they may look a little bit different and they're called a different thing but overall it's all it's an area effect stun or something like that you know but in Guild Wars 2 the the spells and the whole battle system seems so unique that it does make you feel like a you know your your actual character that you're playing 
Um, and I think it's it, it really has to do with the whole act of combat in that you can dodge and that you can deflect things if you're a guardian or you can throw up a firewall and let your ranger shoot arrows through it. Um, I think that in itself really helps with bringing those two things together, the concept and the actual mechanics. So what do you guys, great, Kai, what do you think? The combat mechanics, are they uh, better than other, you know, is there a better concept for combat mechanics you could have put in to make yourself feel like this fantasy hero? I mean, in this game, you're supposed to be this hero, this would-be hero that starts out at, uh, you know, just this generic warrior in the army or in this village or whatever, and slowly, you know, you've proved yourself, and then at the end you have to fight a dragon. So what kind of mechanics and systems do they have in the game to make you feel like that hero? <laughs> um, oh, I can answer all the questions myself, guys, but then it wouldn't be a panel show. <laughs> I like, you know, with the idea of dodging and things like that, as you said, you're a hero. You're not, I mean, as I say, you're a hero. You're not like a, a superhero. So the fact that you have a limit of like two dodge rolls per however long, things like that, it's not unrealistic. So you have got the way that you can feel like a hero by dodging moves and hiding behind things and there's line of sight and things like that but it's not to the extent where you could just keep dodge rolling and constantly avoid combat so i do like the idea that they've implemented those but they've kind of made it a bit more realistic as well so to me it just uh you know the the mmo mechanics the general mmo mechanics that you think of when you think of mmos the whole leveling up and the whole you know getting stronger and taking on stronger more large challenging enemies sort of fits the the theme really well by itself but when i think about what guild war 2 is doing different and trying to figure out okay does that make things better or worse for melding with this theme of would-be hero slowly you know building himself up you know uh, you think of the idea of like Luke Skywalker, like just this guy on a farm, this problem falls in his lap, and he rises to the challenge, right? That's what they want every player to feel like in Guild Wars 2. Well, one of the other things that we know about is in Guild Wars 2, you go back to a lower level, and instead of just being able to one-shot everything, you're sort of down-leveled so that everything is still somewhat challenging, but it's a hell of a lot easier than it used to be, right? You're, you're going to be a level 15 in a 1-15 to 15 style zone, and you're still going to have better gear, so it's going to allow you to effectively kill these things a hell of a lot easier than it used to be, which to me from an immersive trying to meld those mechanics with the theme is a lot better than this jarring, like, massive power difference. Like, I remember these wolves kicking my ass, and now I can just one-shot them. I can sit here and regenerate health faster than they can hurt me. Like, my wounds are literally closing faster than they can bite them. That's just the most <laughs> ridiculous, jarring, immersion-breaking thing I can possibly think like world of warcraft and others it just blows me away so anyway that's that's just one of the things that i but thought of in general that made the game feel closer to the theme how does it work like the other way around though how that you can sidekick your friends up to your level so it's like here have some extra hero power and come help me yeah but the even dragon. then you're still not as strong and and it doesn't make yeah. sense that things are that much stronger than you and then somehow you can rise to that impossible challenge right it just mm -hmm. doesn't make sense in these other games but in guild wars 2 the concept is okay instead of having a power level one to a thousand it's power level one to ten and at the beginning of the game you're going to feel when you're in a level appropriate area you're going to feel like a, a four or a five like you're learning you're still getting better and then if you go back to an older area you're going to feel like a ten not like a thousand but like a ten <laughs> like still way stronger than you were when you were here before but and then if you get sidekicked up you're going to feel like a one you're not going to feel like a negative a thousand right you're going to feel like a one like hey you know uh, this this guy's definitely too much for me personally but when i'm with my friend here we can take him right it's not like ah uh, i'm just you know one shot it all the time so i don't know I don't know. So let's talk about what I really wanted to get into is how do the class mechanics meld with the concept of the class? And the one that's always that I always just when I finally thought of this in my mind is brilliant is the elementalist. Because what is the elementalist thing? Their mechanic, the thing that makes them different from the other classes. Their thing is the attunement system, right? And that's this concept that you've got all of these spells held as matrix of spells you hold in your mind. You can think of it like this four by five grid in your mind. And you need to know what all of those spells are. And taking that intellect, it kind of makes me feel like a wizard. Right? 
Yeah. Okay, master of it. the elements. I love that. Wizard concept. master of the elements. <laughs> did you ever like... have you ever played Magicka? I did. <laughs> yes. Because. I just felt like a button smashing fool <laughs> when I played Magicka instead of playing, feeling like a wizard. <laughs> I agree with you. That's why you have to have the, 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 the matrix in your head. <laughs> you have to know. I you could just imagine you sitting there with, in the future with one of those screens where you can just push it and just slide. No, 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 it's in my mind. I can see it at any moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just That's happens okay. to be set in an, in an insane asylum. Sure you are, buddy. Have fun with that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Directed by M. Night Shalloway? Uh, ah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Saw that coming. So, anyway, I think the Elementalist really fit, nails, the, the mechanic really nails the theme of being this master of the elements. It's all about intellect and this wizard holding all these spells in their mind and needing to call up the correct one at the correct time. This really evokes that D&D &D spirit or feeling. But uh, let me ask, who's going to play a guardian over here? Anybody? Any of you guys feeling about rolling a guardian? I'm going to have um, it as, like, my second main, yeah. so right. my first ult. Kai, then, what do you think about the Guardian's concept of defense and protection <laughs> and protecting others? How does that uh, jive with their mechanics of these wards they put on the ground, the symbols that they can imbue on the ground, wards, you know, the walls and the symbols, the things that can heal allies or help allies and damage enemies or something to that effect, and then the virtues that they have. How does those mesh with their concept of guardian and pr protection? Is it, is it a good, is it well done, you think? Yeah, yeah, I think it's really good done. The way I see a guardian, though, is kind of like an elementalist in plate, well, in mail armor, even. <laughs> and, you know, the way that they can kind of switch between damaging and support is a lot like a fire and a water elementalist. And then they have kind of like the way that they can shield, which is much like an earth elementalist. So that's why I want to play it is because it's like a lot less squishier elementalist. But it does really fit with the whole idea of a guardian. You think someone that's going to protect someone, which they can do, but they can also do quite a bit of damage as well to kind of sustain, you know, the usability in a group situation. But yeah, I think it works and a lot like an elementalist though. <laughs> Anybody else think that the guardian does not fit really well? Okay, I, I, I agree. I think, for I think it works. works. I think they all do a pretty good job. Well, of... that's, well, let's wait, because uh, now oh. I'm getting to Warrior. And I got to tell you, I am not really happy with the Warrior's what? mechanic. Oh, I got to tell you, the concept of the Warrior is like the master at arms, right? This guy knows how to use every weapon. He's the, the martial specialist. I loved that idea. So what I'd love to see with the warrior was like three weapon slots instead of two. Like the only class in the mm. game that had three weapon slots, master of weaponry, right? That would be a really cool way that fit into the concept of this is a guy who's mastered all the physical arts of combat. He doesn't dilly dally with those spells. He's got a great sword and he's got a massive hammer and he's got a sword and a shield or, you know, a bow and whatever he needs. He can have a two handed weapon, uh, a, a, two one-handed weapons and a ranged weapon and that's like the master of arms i love that concept instead what do we get we get an adrenaline burst skill and we get banners <laughs> that just doesn't I feel think... like this master does, martial yeah, yeah. you're agree. looking at the warrior the wrong way he's not supposed to be like, like this deadly whirlwind of like steel he's he can be actually but he's not supposed to be like that i see the warrior as more of like a battle master and like a leader in battle like a sergeant almost someone who's so gonna, not like, a barbarian <laughs> not a barbarian uh, like a, a, a battle master. You said marshal, but like think like field marshal, some guy who's commanding troops, but he'll get out there and kick some ass if he needs to. Oh so, yeah, like, okay. Because he does banner. have the shouts. He's gonna be yelling at. He's gonna be yelling at people to like go do stuff. But you say the master of arms and that the adrenaline doesn't work well. But think of the adrenaline burst skill as like a sixth weapon skill because it changes with every weapon. Yeah. So you you basically have six weapon skills. One you can't use every time. The cooldown is based on like your how fast you can build up your adrenaline. So it does work with the Master of Arms, in my opinion. I heard they come in shots where I can just right into the heart. And then I'm ready to go. Uh, actually, there's probably a trait for that, I think. That's going to be the new thing. Everybody says there's an app for that. No, there's a trait for that. Okay. That's what I'd, I'd love if there was a major trait that just gave you a third weapon slot. <laughs> but I think that would be too powerful, even for a major trait. Um, so let's see. So that's the Warrior. Uh, the Ranger... So this is somebody who's like, you know, Strider in Lord of the Rings. It's a survivalist, somebody who's a forester, you know, and they're, they're in commune with nature. You know, they, they talk to the nature spirits. And the mechanics are you've got some spirits that you can call on and you have a pet. So what do you guys think, good or bad? 
I think it's good. Like, I mean, from the videos I've seen from like the press beta, the amount of pets they're gonna have is ridiculous. I mean, I know there's been a lot of jokes like Pokemon, gotta catch them all and things like that because there is tons. <laughs> there's like 30 plus or something like that. So I think it's perfect sense. They allowed to have pets, so they should be able to choose what kind of pet they want, whether it be a spider, a bear, a shark, a dolphin, whatever. No, no spiders so, <laughs> in my guild. If there's a spider coming to revive me, I'm no, I'm just gonna die instead. Not gonna lick <laughs> my wounds. Not gonna nope, happen. Good. <laughs> I'm another mentalist. <laughs> <laughs> never gonna live that down, apparently. All right, so let's move on. Necromancer, master of death magic, I bring you to life. <laughs> okay. Compare and contrast <laughs> with the fact that they can have minions and wells of power and this life force and they're like one of the only classes that can really use the fear condition a whole lot so does that really work really well i think it does yep, I think maybe not as I, well as the elementalist in the matrix in their mind I, but i think they're i think they're elite skill that turns them into that whatever i forgot the name of it uh, but the one that turns them into uh, the thing uh, lich lich form lich form lich yeah. form that's <laughs> pretty Necro necromancerish tank <laughs> Blood magic. Yeah, I think the necromancer worked really well. Now, the thief. Stealth, speed, and surprise. The thief now has to deal with the shadow step, the ability to steal things, <laughs> and the <laughs> stealth mechanics that are... That's uh, just like thief, literally. Like, you can steal <laughs> things. Really, it's, <laughs> an <actual thief. laughs> it's an actual thief. Well done, Arena. I know. I'm, wait I'm waiting for Freelancer to Never. start bashing the thief. <laughs> yeah, he's not on the show to bash the thief this time. He's in the chat, though. Should <laughs> he, he is. be working? Yeah, what's he doing? He's slacking off to watch Tales of Tyria. Oh, my God. Freelancer slacking off to watch my show. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so I think the Thief works really well. Uh, the Shadow Step especially is like sort of gives you this concept where they have this magic that attunes them with shadows and hidden hiding and, and having to do with, uh, to some extent, a lesser version of a Mesmer's illusionary ability. They can't create illusions on other things, but they can cause illusions on themselves and use that illusionary shadow magic to just appear behind you when you're not expecting it or to suddenly disappear and you don't know where they went and you can't see them because the shadows are hiding them and you just don't know. So I think that works really well. Um, although the, I, I wish they'd come up, I mean, is there a better idea than thief? Like it's, it's a rogue. They could have made it assassin. I mean, thief is just doesn't, it doesn't feel as badass. Yeah, like, the I'm a guardian and you know, I'm a warrior, an elementalist, a necromancer, and I'm a petty thief. <laughs> a grand larceny, grand larceny. Like maybe con man? No, that doesn't work. I'm reading the lies of Lock Lamara. So, anyway, I think the uh, the engineer works really well. This concept of somebody who's a, a gadgeteer, somebody who tinkers and makes a lot of things, uh, technological advancements, and with the sort of revised tool belt ability, like he's like Batman, is he? It's a little bit like Batman. He is Batman. Yeah, I just see it's like. Ooh. Someone who has no magical power, and they've kind of been like, oh, "I want to be a hero too." Equip tool belt. Hey, and then, like... stop talking trash about engineers. <laughs> That's what it feels like, though. Like they've got no, like it kind of breaks the immersion a little bit. Like they're not magical. They haven't got any fighting skill. They're just kind of like, "I'm gonna wear a backpack and a tool belt and just." Well, that's go in what there. Batman is, though, isn't he? You've got Superman. He can fly, and you got Spider Man. He's a spider dude. Everybody's got a superpower <laughs> except Batman. Batman's like, "Screw all y'all." <laughs> I'm rich. I'm just going to make my own superpowers. And there he does. Boom. He just uses everything he needs to do. So, oops. Engineer, engineers for the win. Engineers going to be I, You know, I don't need your silly magic, all right? My <laughs> flamethrower. Flame 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 my flamethrower is more than OP. enough to burninate you. They're going to be the most OP class. I can, I'm going to say it right now because I've no seen the, videos. No way. Yes, they are. They are going to a, a good player playing a good en an engineer really well is going to destroy everyone just because of like the <laughs> the amount of stuff they have they just have a lot of things they can use and they can switch between them and this is crazy yeah but elementalist thank god like, they have the matrix. Limited. Matrix. they're limited on what they can do like, engineer, <laughs> engineer can literally have like 10 different skill bars at once i'm like okay whatever yeah but they are still very specific i feel See, like but... the elementalist is more widespread to many different roles whereas each of those little toolkits is very specific and i don't know i i'd have to play the i, I haven't looked too deeply into the engineer but i still think yeah. that you're wrong 
Because <laughs> that's how we do here. Mortar! <laughs> Come on, elite mortal. You can have, like, two siege weapons right there. All right, like my mortar, warrior's just going to leap skill. the distance that the mortar can fire in, like, half a second and destroy <laughs> it with a swingle swallop from his greatsword. And then so we'll we can see get to him because yeah. he dropped the glue on the ground. Uh, I like how everyone's glue. saying engineers are going to be OP. Oh. <laughs> and uh, that is why. See, but you just see, but like if you say if you say that oh that if that guy that guy's really good with an engineer he's OP. No, he's really good with an engineer. An OP class is like when you're not that good but you're still destroying people. Yeah. You get what like I'm saying? Like Teemo in yeah. League of Legends. Time <laughs> will tell. All right, the Mesmer is our last one, the master of illusion magic, of controlling your mind. So, does he live up to the large shoes of Patrick Jane, the mentalist? Who is that? No, <laughs> watch CBS. Never mind. Never mind. Um, he's a cold reader like John Edwards, but he's helping the FBI, CBI, what, it's, it's a show on TV. Anyway, illusion oh. magic versus <laughs> okay. clones, phantasms, and mantras. So, uh, I think this fits pretty well. I, I don't know where liked... mantras come from. It's kind of weird. Left what field. Is a, man a, ma a mantra? That's one of the things that the mantra. Mesmer can get. They, they, it's a spell that has like a three or four second preparation time, but then it's an instant cast after you've prepared it. So they have like a heal spell that takes oh, okay. three or four seconds to prepare it. And then when you, and then in combat, you can hit it instantly. But then if you wanted to use it again, it takes that three or four seconds to prep it again. So um, it's, it's an interesting mechanic. I don't know that the Mesmer would be the best one to put it on. Maybe the Warrior. Yeah, I think, he needs I think that's really, that's really the only one that's a little like out of place. Cause the Mesmer, when I think of the Mesmer, I think of like, that tricky little piece of crap that I can't hit because it keeps on cloaking or teleporting or moving away, but... Not sitting on the ground meditating, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I would see the mantras as being part of, like, the Guardian or something. Yeah, maybe something... Actually, like Mega Neko from the chat says, think about it, a mantra is something... A mantra is something that you try to convince yourself of. You say it over and over again until it becomes true. Kind of like... Um, you're good enough, you're smart enough, and gosh darn it, people like me. That's, That's what Mesmer's need. They need a bit of inspiration and self-motivation. Well, I saw in a I video, say, I, they do cast, they actually say like words, so I think it was like the damaging one, and they're like pain, life, or something. I'm like, oh, they're actually saying words. Oh, I say cool. that we yeah. just keep on bashing on Mesmer's since Freelancer can't defend himself. That's right. right. Yeah. I think that'll teach him not no. to show up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, but I think in general, the Mesmer really nails it, obviously, because of the clones and the phantasms and the idea of illusion magic. And that really kind of nails it. Now, the Mesmer is the only other one that I've found that really has access to a decent number of stealth skills. Like, there's a couple of them that will create a clone and then stealth you and like teleport the clone somewhere so that they don't know that the clone is actually a clone and you're stealth. So it's usually very short duration stealth as opposed to the thief, which has longer duration stealth. But the Mesmer still does get to use that stealth, which does fit right in with the illusion magic. You're like, where did he go? I don't know, maybe he's behind me, ow, my back. So <laughs> I think that works pretty well. What do you guys think? Any final comments here on the round table? No, nope. <laughs> we're running a little long, but I good want engineer, to get this in. Good engineers are going to be really, really good, and warriors are going to just be amazing. I hope so. I want that and adrenaline to be Adventures are going to be amazing. The Matrix. <laughs> so, I guess with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take our leave of you today. Uh, I do want to point out, we do have the brand new Tales of Tyria website. We are looking for all kinds of feedback, so if you have any feedback, please send it to feedback at talesoftyria.com. That's how you can get a hold of us. Tell us if you've got any show topics that you like or anything else that you've got on your mind. Any comments in return to what we said on today's show. Anything about why the website looks like crap, etc., etc. Definitely want to hear from you. Uh, also subscribe to our Twitter at Tales of Tyria. And I think that's it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, beta invites went out. We'll see what happens. Next week's show will be on Monday. Yeah. And you'll see more information on that on the Tales of Tyria website. Next week's show will be on Monday. And I'm getting another plug here. Ask everyone to favorite the channel, says Freelancer. Favorite the channel on YouTube. 
Go to Sound Strategy Network is the username. The Sound, Strat Sound Strategy Network. There's a link in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs>